Falcon 9's in startup. And the vehicle is in startup. Both stages are beginning to pressurize for launch. In a few seconds here, we should be hearing the launch director give the final go for liftoff. LD on countdown one, go for launch. And there you heard it. That is the final go for launch at T minus 35 seconds. All systems are go for the Transporter 1 mission. Let's listen and watch in as we lift off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. Two bolts pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. Plus 43 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and is currently throttling down to prepare for max Q at around the T plus 1 minute and 12 second mark. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon, Falcon 9 is supersonic. Q. And we've just passed Max Q. That is a really cool tracking shot of Falcon 9. All is looking good with the Stage 1 trajectory. Uh, in about a minute, we have three events coming up in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff. That's where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off, followed by stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate from one another. Uh, shortly after that, we'll have a second engine start one, the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite its engine and continue its journey into orbit. And vac engine chill has begun. about 20 seconds away from main engine cutoff, the start of those three events happening in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Coming up in a few seconds, we should have the fairing deploy. In vac ignition. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see the two fairing halves have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 143 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. And as a reminder, our recovery vessel, Miss Chief, will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today from the water. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is the entry burn. Three of the nine Merlin engines have relit. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one entry burn shutdown. 
And you can see on screen the entry burn has concluded. And in just a few seconds, we should be here on the call up for a second engine cutoff, where we'll shut down the second stage MBAC engine. FDS is saved. There's the second stage. Also signal stage one, Cape Eco. expected. The second stage has shut down its engine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be attempting to recover the booster for a fifth time. Nominal parking orbit on our, insertion. On our drone ship, of course, I still love you. The first stage has one more burn left, the landing burn, and it, it begins just before we touch down and provides the booster with a soft descent before we land. That stage should be starting up burn. anytime now. And we did get confirmation of the second stage that it did reach a good parking orbit. Stage one landing leg deploy. LOS stage two, Cape Canaveral expected. And Falcon 9 returns safely once again. That is the fifth time for this particular booster and the 73rd recovery of an orbital class rocket. A great way to start off the mission and a great way to start off the Sunday. We're now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for SES-2, or second engine start number two. We're going to leave you with an animation that shows you where we're at in the coast phase, and we'll see you back here at the T-plus 54-minute mark. The first of those deployments should be happening around the T-plus 58-minute and 30-second mark. There's a view of the Transporter 1 payload containing all 143 spacecraft. For today's ride shares, there are 11 ports on our payload, payload, payload adapter responsible for sending 133 spacecraft plus our 10 Starlink satellites uh, into orbit. Some of these ports will have multiple deployments. Uh, for these, over the countdown nets, we'll hear callouts for when the deployment sequence has begun, and another callout for when the deployment sequence has completed. There are also then a handful of ports that will deploy only once, and we'll try to let you know who the customer is for each deployment, along with how many spacecraft are being sent into space. We're just over a minute away from the first set of deployments. Due to the nature of the payload stack, we will not have visuals for every deployment, but we do hope to catch most of them with our two camera views. It's also worth noting that uh, we will lose access to ground station coverage for a short period during the 18-minute deployment sequence. And when we, when we reach that point, we'll let you know uh, over the webcast. First up, the deployment sequences for port C4 and C1 will be initiated at the T-plus 58 minute and 30 second mark. On port C4, there are 36 planet superdoves, and then there are 17 spacecraft aboard Kepler's port on port C1. And there goes the 10 Starlink satellites, the first set to go to a polar orbit. Uh, with that, with those 10, that is 143 spacecraft deployed on a single mission, the most ever. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, with that said, that will be bringing our webcast to an end. We would like to thank all of our rideshare customers for their support on today's mission. We'd also like to thank the United States Air Force for range support, as well as the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing. 
Continue to follow us on SpaceX.com for future missions and milestones, as well as our Twitter and Instagram profiles. And if you are excited about what you've seen today and want to join our team, visit SpaceX.com slash careers to learn more about working at SpaceX. Thank you to all of our viewers for your continued support and have a wonderful rest of the day.